school. Yeah. And that spur, well, it started that fall with a kid saying to me, Mr. Ryan, um, were our ancestors stupid? And he was looking at a picture of a Revolutionary War battle and it made no sense to him. They're all lined up, bright uniforms. And he said, I dig a hole. Yeah. And that's when I realized we had to uh, do some linear <laughs> warfare teaching. I ended up with nine kids, and actually a dozen kids probably when I finally got done with two by four muskets and birds of Zance uniforms in the parking lot that spring. So it'd be spring of 1970, I put troops. Okay, so from <laughs> 80, 90, so, oh, wow. Yeah, a well, lot of years. I'm going to say that. <laughs> and I joined I'm Brigade saying, in 1972. I'm going to say more than 40 years. Right, that's a golden anniversary, yeah, isn't it? 50? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm golden, all right. Yeah, I'm like, well done. Turn me over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. But uh, so, so Mitch, my friend, is our Zoom master. You see Mitch there. And he, at 2 o'clock, he's designating that as the time when we start the PowerPoint. So we'll probably mute everybody then um mitch yeah, yeah. right yeah and, Constance, uh, i don't know if you can see me but i i can see you all and i i hope you can hear me also i'm john Sveebrook. i'm in the fifth new york with joe yes uh-huh are you I've in a little in square that says louisa yes I'm oh okay this. i'm using her computer right now ah uh, yes this is always confusing it's right horrible. So, uh, well, that's great that you joined up with uh, this little gathering today. Um, we have, uh, uh, I don't know, John Lopez is joining and various other people. So we've got, <laughs> depending on how quickly things move, I mean, we're gonna try to just do John Lopez and Joe Ryan as our major speakers on the Battle of White Plains. Oh, but boy. we hope to have time at the end to come back around and have like a freer exchange of ideas and questions. So put things in the um, uh, the chat, you know, things that you think people might be interested in and and all that. I think it'll um, that's that I think it'll work. Let's hope <laughs> you're gonna all pick me up if if, if I look stupid. Yeah, <laughs> Just, <laughs> do something encouraging. So I. I feel better. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Fine. Yeah, that's good. Um, so anything else I need to know in way of encouragement before two o'clock? No? You got it, General. <laughs> <laughs> Philomena? Hey, Philomena, do you have any words of wisdom? Huh? Just go and have fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. I'll try. <laughs> You've done a lot of these, haven't you? Hosted quite a few. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So you just gotta take it easy, have fun, and everyone will have fun too. Right. Honey, it's Lynn. Um, I have one Welcome. bit of advice. As they say in Japanese, "gambate kudasai," which means "do your best." Oh, that's great, Lynn. Lynn, is, Lynn gets the uh, the volunteer time invested award for the last like two months. <laughs> She's in California trying to be a volunteer here. So, oh yeah, yeah. Thanks, Lynn. That's, You're welcome. Yes, we're we're starting off in your territory with Andre and uh, um, and Benedict Arnold and the whole story. That's our first one. So. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any other words of wisdom from you? Definitely not. <laughs> well, speaking of Andre, I, I live about a mile and a half from where he was hanged. Oh, yes. On the other side of the. So does, uh, oh, Kevin. yeah. I grew up in Palisades. All right. Okay. Not far. I'm in Blauvelt. Yeah, well, we were, yes, we're about two and a half, three miles from each other. Right. Okay. Yeah. We've all been to the 1776 house. Often. That, uh, that cool, dress. That cool, yeah, that cool little restaurant. Um, Kevin's you gotta go to John's. You got to go to John's house sometime. It's older than that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, John lives in a really, George Washington really slept at John's house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> Well, no, I, I have documentation of that. Oh, oh yes, wow. right. That's what we want. Uh, My house was built in 1755. 
Wow. Oh, wow. How cool there is that? There are a lot of old houses in Blauvelt, yes. Yeah. Well, here in, here in Irvington, we have uh, Odell Tavern, and that's in the 1690s, I'm going to say. So the, 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 where John Odell, who later moved um, after the war to what was Rochambeau's headquarters in Hartsdale, his childhood his home childhood was right here in Irvington. Oh, hey, hey, hey buddy. All right, Rhode Island is there. It's Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne How is are you guys? Rhode All Island. Right. Oh, Where yeah. are you, Dwayne? I can't see you. Oh, I'm right here. Man, I can. Yeah, I can see him. Oh, you can see him? I, yeah. yeah. What a, is he, he's, he should be in uniform. Oh, he, yes, he is. is. He is. You, you, what did you pull rank and tell him, you know? <laughs> hey, hey, you know, he's, he's an educational specialist for the foundation, so. I oh, know. he's looking good, brother. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, Woo! first of all, ha happy New Year's to everybody. And uh, you got a big hug back in the spring when we all get together. Yes, for right. sure. Man, man. So, so, so Dwayne, when I, I hope you're with us for the duration. I, I hope you don't have to run away and do something else. <laughs> no. Stay with us because I've got this great part where I introduce our video series and I have that picture. It's not the one you sent me, but it's because that wasn't in the slideshow, but right. it's great okay. that you'll be able to say something about the, the Rhode Island thing yeah. and just whatever, you know, I'm trying yeah. to get people, if, if Joe Ryan talks more than a minute, <laughs> we're in trouble <laughs> because that means we're behind from the first start. <laughs> well, uh, again, thank you for uh, pulling all this together and your participation. I really appreciate that. We, we keep history alive and growing and teaching and letting young people know we, we have a great thing up here in Buchanan where we go out to the elementary school and, and uh, do a performance for them and uh, Joe's inspirational in that. And actually this year we did uh, the picture of Joe and myself and uh, Joe Tapiani uh, where we dressed up in period outfits oh. and made it to the calendar of the Buchanan Fire Department. So <laughs> I'll make sure you guys get a copy of that. Wow. Oh, I want to see that, right. Yeah. And, and the I guess, Reynolds. I don't know okay. if everybody knows that you still serve as a trustee in Buchanan. Yes, I do. Yes, right. I do. Yeah, I know. It's like Constance, can yes, you hear here. me? It's Linda. Can, can you hear me? It's Linda. Oh, Linda, you're here. Yes, I can. I can't see you, but I can hear you. I, well, I have my video on. Can everybody? Oh, there yeah, you are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we, we see you see now. You. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. You know some of these folks here that are already uh, appearing. Do. It's my pleasure to know them. Let me tell yes. you. Yes. <laughs> well, I hope you. Joe and I go way back. We don't. Oh, yeah. We do a long way back. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's. It's, it's such a strange coming together with all these history lovers, you know, from up in your northern section down to Yonkers and all over. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be quite a uh, little gathering we have here. But yes, Linda's going to go first because she's got to go take care of a snowstorm. So I got to go. I got to get, you know, get ready with our with our workers and the snow preparation. And it's going to be a big one. So everybody hunker down. Make sure you have food in the house, water. Et yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I'll, I'm going to actually start at two o'clock. Mitch is our um, Mitch Hart is our Zoom master. So I told him we're just going to start you know, we'll start the little PowerPoint and then I'll, you know, there'll be several slides and then I'll say, Supervisor Linda Puglisi, please share a few words with us. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> it'll work. I think it'll work. Right, right, Mitch? <laughs> you can even, if you want um, Linda to speak before the slides, we could do that too. Um, I, th I, th I think Linda's okay with a few minutes of my intro. Um, yeah, I won't. Yeah. I'll, I'll be quiet. I won't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Can you vouch for all these other folks? <laughs> yeah, I don't think then we're going to do it that way. So what's it saying? All right. So, all right. Uh, I have two o'clock. Uh, Mitch, you can you can put up the PowerPoint and do start the Diane Taylor. Not sure if it was sent. So um, 
I don't see my little picture here on the side, but are we are we live now with everybody? I guess we are. Um, so I'm Constance Kehoe. It's two o'clock. I know a lot of people are just uh, coming into the the Zoom room, but I am very happy to welcome you all as you come in. Um, I wanted to make sure you actually knew, if you don't, what Revolutionary Westchester 250 is, um, and then we'll get on to our updates. But I thought it was important for you to know that this actually is an outgrowth of a 2016 Act of Congress. Uh, President Obama signed in 2016 a law to create a national semi-quincentennial commission. And that would take uh, from 2016 to 2026. Um, and during that 10 year period, the idea is just to plan and organize and set up uh, commemorative projects and basically get people excited about this. So we've been doing that uh, since 2018. Uh, some of you um, I saw back then and some of you I've met since, but um, we also uh, need to let you know that um, it's not over in 2026. <laughs> so those of you who are younger than me, when you look at uh, December 31st of 2033, uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. That's... That's the actual end at this point of this commemorative <laughs> period. Don't, don't laugh, but there's another generation coming. I mean, for frankly, I'm concerned about what we're doing right now and building awareness and getting people excited about our local history. So Mitch, the next slide. Right, so this is what we're doing today. We'll focus on today and our, um, project here. So as there, there are some 80 some people who have said they are joining us, which is great. Um, I have no idea if uh, they're going to make it, but uh, this is our plan for the day for our party. By the way, if, I don't know, can you still see me in a little box over here? Um, yes. Okay, here's my tankard. <laughs> this is a real 18th century one. <laughs> And you can all get your drink as needed because this is a party, right? Okay. Um, so the first two uh, topics, uh, initiatives that we're going to talk about today, I'm going to share some slides. We're going to have many wonderful guest speakers. Um, one of them um, is of, of great interest, especially in the uh, northern part of Westchester. And if I say patriots, traitors, soldiers, spy, <laughs> most of you probably know what I'm talking about, but we'll get to that slide in a second. Um, and the second uh, initiative, um, if I say Battle of White Plains, I think that's also going to be something familiar to you. Um, there are some folks who know a lot more about the Battle of White Plains than I do who are joining us today, and you will hear from some of them. Um, you should know, um, and you will learn a lot at about 2.30 when we talk about the state level initiatives that are going to make what we do in Westchester uh, really possible. Um, you'll hear from uh, Senator Shelley Mayer. Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins, um, I think Tom Avenanti will be with us, Assembly member, and we'll also um, hear from County Executive George Latimer. The county and the state need to work together for this to all work for us, and then all of the wonderful folks in the local communities. I mean, it, nothing is nothing is done unless um, you're interested. So. Um, then we're gonna to talk to um, a little bit about our two video series. One um, has been funded by uh, the county. The first one focused on places. And we, I know we have some folks, Ben Boykin and others from the county who have made this possible. And then the new videos that are gonna start that are 
people specific, and that's funded by the Greenway. And I'm uh, expecting we'll have some people to talk about that as well. We do a little bit of stuff with music. Uh, we have some very creative people. We have um, young violinists from Dobbs Ferry who is with us, I think, in person as well as on a little YouTube. And we have our young intern, Lila Walsh. And we do expect to talk a little bit about a whole initiative for creative people. Um, I don't count myself in that category. So next slide. Um, that's just giving you a sense of, if I were asking you to do something today, I'd just say, think about how you might want to be involved. If you see something that you think is like exciting, I want to be part of that, just put it in the chat or be in touch with me. We need help. We need help for our newsletters, for our, um, for our web page, for our initiatives. So whatever you're interested in, that would be great if uh, you get excited today. Next slide. And you know about these folks, you've heard about these people, but that's not the whole story. Uh, next slide. I just wanna make sure everybody knows right from the get-go that our commitment, RW250, is totally committed to a full and inclusive telling of this part of history. Not just the famous people, the unsung, um, certainly women, people of color, there have been a lot of people left out. Perhaps at the bicentennial, people felt like that wasn't my story. So we in New York State and the county know that this is, don't worry, this is the way we're doing it. Okay, next slide. And so those are some of the main things, not we won't do all of them. Look at all those parts of Westchester, tons of places, things have happened. We won't get to the Franco-American Alliance. That's a really important thing, but we don't have time in our party to do everything today. Okay, next slide. And this is where we get back to our patriots and Terrytown and the whole um, really upper part of um, Westchester. Next slide. There, this is. <laughs> If you think you can't make sense of this, don't worry about it. These are all the places we know so far that are part of the story of the Patriots, Major Andre the spy and his, uh, his collusion with the traitor Benedict Arnold. And all of that is part of our story today. Um, next slide. Here are some folks who've already said, I'll re I'm ready to help. <laughs> so um, we're gonna start with that whole process with community conversations. And over the next, however long, we're gonna think about what are the appropriate commemorative projects to tell this popular part of history. So with that long introduction, my dear friend, Supervisor Linda Puglisi um, is taking a little time out from her responsibilities and I will um, be happy to hear from her now. If Linda, you wanna unmute yourself and say hello. I'm unmuted, am I Constance? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Well, first of all, uh, thank you so much for inviting me to um, participate in this very important historical party. History has been um, an important part of my life. As a young girl, my father, the, my late father was the town historian of Orangetown for 25 years, a history teacher, a history professor. And so I think uh, my sisters and I, my dad and mom, we went to every single historical marker in New York State and beyond. <laughs> And I'm so glad that he took me there because I love history as you all know. So thank you uh, uh, to our president, uh, Constant Kehoe and to this excellent committee. It is such an important uh, journey that we're on as we get towards uh, uh, 2026. Um, the history in our area and the role that we played in the American Revolution was critical to our victory. So let me set the stage for a very important part of that history. We have a traitor, 
a spy, and of course, our patriots. In 1780, as the Revolutionary War was in its sixth year, United States Major General Benedict Arnold was becoming disgruntled and was plotting to betray West Point and its neighboring Hudson Valley fortifications to the British troops, therefore becoming a traitor, which he is known for into posterity. Several weeks after receiving his post as commander at West Point, he finalized these treasonous plans with Major John Andre of the British Army Militia. He was to receive 20,000 pounds and betray the 2,000 American troops um, protecting West Point and the region. So the stage was set between a traitor and a spy. Arnold met Andre in Havistra, not far from West Point, on September 21st, 1780. But Andre could not escape on his plan route on the British warship, the Vulture, for this warship had been driven off by American cannon fire. Major Andre had no other choice after he received the sensitive documents from Arnold the plans of West Point, but to travel a dangerous route in his perspective, first to cross to the Westchester side of the Hudson and travel under the name of John Anderson. He had in his possession a signed letter from Benedict Arnold stating he was on a mission for him so that he could pass through American stops safely, so they thought. The journey was almost successful because at the time people still trusted Arnold and wanted to help. He proceeded on horseback, Andre did, towards British lines heading east from the Verplank area of Cortland through Peekskill into Yorktown, Chappaqua and Pleasantville. We all know these lovely areas very well today. Towards the end of his mission, he was stopped thankfully by three Westchester militiamen heroes, John Paulding, Isaac Van Wart, and David Williams. They became suspicious of Major Andre, who appeared very nervous. They ordered him off the horse and discovered the incriminating documents in his boot. They now knew that they were dealing with a spy. John Paulding of the three was the only one who could read and confirm their suspicions. By the way, there is a monument at um, Paulding's grave in our historical cemetery in the Van Cortlandville um, section of town in Northern Cortland. The three American heroes took the now captured British Major John Andre to Tapan from, from Tarrytown, the place of his capture, where the plans were turned over to General George Washington once again thankfully in safe hands. Andre was held in a jail in an inn now called the 76 house, a wonderful inn and restaurant. I have dined there many times over the years with my family. Benedict Arnold, the traitor, escaped to British forces in New York City. Andre was tried and hung nine days after his capture in the uh, tap to Pan Square where today there's a monument which was erected in 1853 to depict this critical point and action taken by the American patriots. The uh, plaque at the monument states, there meaning the militiamen's conduct, con conduct merits our warmest esteem. They have prevented in all probability our suffering one of the severest strokes that could have been mediated against us. Words by General George Washington. I have seen this monument many times and read the plaque uh, over the years with my father, as I said, was an Orangetown town historian for 25 years. Sadly, the jail in this inn was not uh, preserved. I remember going downstairs to where the uh, jail was, which held uh, Major Andre, an earthen floor, and the jail was not there. 
it had been taken out for whatever reason. Today's world, it would have been pres preserved on the um, historic registry, of course. Um, but be that what it may, all the rest of the, hairy, uh, the history is depicted by monuments and plaques and Major John Andre's captors are given tribute as they should be. So Major John Andre's last words, according to the records of history, is the following, quote, I bear my fate like a brave man, end quote he said. Well, to me, he's not a brave man. He's a, he's a um, spy and he worked with the treasonous Benedict Arnold, who I'm not even going to call a general Benedict Arnold. So we have a traitor, Benedict Arnold, a spy. Uh, John Andre was only 31 years old when he was hung. And uh, the Patriots, the Americans won this victory and helped in winning the American Revolution. So we are forever in their gratitude. A little shout out to my friend, Jeff Canning, uh, <laughs> who assisted me with historical notes from the Van Cortlandville Historical Society. Wow. I just wanna say in conclusion, um, this is such a wonderful project and endeavor, and I'm so pleased that so many people are involved in this, um, elected officials at every level. It's so important to continue the history and to teach and to teach our, our children. Right. Oh, so, Linda. Thank, thank you so much. Oh, Linda, your support for this is so critical. I mean, you've got Verplank point right there. You've got... <laughs> You're the, you're the center of it. So Aww. we'll look for you. We know you have to go take care of a snowstorm. Yeah. Uh, we, um, we think all the volunteers who will work on this over the next few years, if you were willing, they'll call on you and we'll, we'll pull you in as you're able. I am more than willing. Please call upon me, Constance, please. Okay, you. okay so bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Linda. Thank you so much. Um, um, Mitch, we're going to go back to the slides. Um, uh, Linda's done such a great job covering um, that piece of the history. We do have um, on our, um, we're going to, um, yeah, the slide. I think we'll just go back to the slideshow. We don't need the um, the, the video because Linda's covered it so well. Um, yeah, so this is something that now, now that you see that there are these people involved, um, and you you see that you can join something like this, you could actually go backwards to the slide with the um, the uh, go back like two slides backwards. Yeah, that one. Um, and now forward one to the little map there. So all of you who are interested in this story, um, I'm going to ask you to just think about this and feel free to uh, go on our um, website um, and our, uh, I'll put all this information in, but we have um, Eric Weiselberg's presentation in Terrytown about two months ago that's on our YouTube video channel where you can see this slide again. You can pause it and, and watch it and hear Eric talk for about 10 minutes about this. But if you're interested in joining this, just put it in the um, chat that you're interested in this. Okay, so let's go forward now a bit, uh, Mitch. We can go back, there we go, and the Battle of White Plains. Um, I'm gonna start on this and I know there are so many people here that um, you're gonna be hearing from before too long. Um, Shelley uh, Mayer, Senator Mayer is here, Terry Kirchner from the library. We've got uh, Mary Jane is here. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let this move forward to get a little bit on the Battle of White Plains. And then I think I'm gonna ask Ben Boinkin since he's a White Plains guy to say a few things about the importance of this in White Plains. Um, but right now, um, what you see here is uh, the good news that the Battle of White Plains will have a reenactment um, planned in the year 2026 because the County of Westchester has made Ward 
Pound Ridge Reservation available for this to be done. So if you go forward, Mitch, I'm going to ask, I think, Joe Ryan, are you ready to talk a little bit about reenactments and pulling kids into an interest in history? Joe? Let's see, he might be muted. <laughs> Joe Ryan is the- I'm uh, not muted now, my dear. Okay, there he goes, okay. <laughs> all right, first of all, I, 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 I feel badly that Linda Puglisi left the, left the, the, the house because <laughs> of her efforts. There is, we have this beautiful historic site at Kings Ferry and Verplank, beautiful riverfront park. We've yeah. done reenactments there. The foundation, the Living History Education Foundation that I had and a lot of people are part of, Dwayne's one of our educational specialists, John's a member, one of our master educators, uh, Tom, Sean and Gary, who do your Andre Arnold. Well, anyway, cut to the chase. Linda just did a wonderful job down at the Riverfront Park. I mean, and she was the leader of it. Okay, so that's the other side of the coin. Um, the reenactment you want me to talk about, my dear? Yeah, and I'd like to, I'd like you to just give a sense that why are reenactments important? I mean, all right. Well, one, there's always the financial reason. <laughs> yes. All right, uh, and and I guess I'm going to give it to you the the Cliff Notes version. Um, for the 250th an anniversary of the French and Indian War, New York State made a 250th anniversary commission, of which I was a commissioner. It generated uh, over the nine year period something like 15 million dollars in tourist dollars. Mm -hmm. Involved thousands of uh, reenactors in a series of reenactments. Amongst uh, some were only four or five hundred, and some were three hundred. Uh, we had actual teachers participating in the reenactment, fully uniformed and equipped by the foundation. Um, a lot of educational materials went out, mm -hmm. so these really work. And I guess I'm going to say the political side of it is that um, it's a good thing. I mean, it's really wonderful that Westchester's got this on the calendar because that that's a great coup there, General. I always refer to Connie as a general. She's a local <laughs> militia general. She's not a continental line general, but she's at least a local militia general. Um, and having that blocked on the calendar lets those of us in the reenactment hobby, and I think we're gonna have John Lopez on board at some point. Um, and I was talking about this among the, the regiment and, and in the foundation. Um, the Battle of White Plains recreation uh, for education Hopefully we will have lots of lead up so that, that students will, will go with the families. Actually kids will want to bring their parents to that instead of parents wanting to bring their kids to that. <laughs> and um, I mean, we've got the good model of 2001, which was very successful reenactment in Ward Pound Ridge, plenty of area, plenty of things. And people had a wonderful time. Um, those of us who, uh, I mean, I, I think that the education this year has been so hard. The teachers have just gotten this, this screen stuff. Of course, I've got six grandkids who aren't thrilled about screen education either. But I think by us aiming at a reenactment where people can come, uh, see, the, see the reenactment, go through the various camps, interact with a wide variety of people who, who are really living historians, would be a real advantage just at the education level for the county. Would it be good for tourism? Of course it would be. So and I don't know uh, who of our uh, budget people are watching this <laughs> right now, but it works. And we've got the documentation to prove it, which of course, at some point, I guess Devin Lander is going to be on today uh, talking said, about the state level, correct? And uh, and Senator Mayor, I see, is here already. So Oh, good, good. I, I, I think uh, Dwayne had reached out to uh, his friend, uh, Senator P. Harkham, who has been a very big supporter of the Foundation and of Living History. I don't know if he's going to get a chance to come in. By the way, his his number one person, Tom, his daughter works for Short Ticonderoga. So, you know, everybody's like six degrees of separation around this joint. Well, but I think you want me to focus on, on, on the Battle of White Plains. Well, and can I ask, um, I know this is, because I'm your general, right? I I, I'll shut up, Jen. Okay. <laughs> do I get to interrupt? <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, Oh, all right. I, I just wanted to make sure, I mean, uh, Mitch, um, our Zoom master, can move the, some of the pictures forward um, on this, um, uh, rather than just on this one there, because I, I wanted people to get a sense of the magnitude of these reenactments, if everyone can see some of these pictures. 
um, what you're seeing here was from 2001, am I right? That's right. right. You'll and, see me in there, except I'm an awful lot younger looking. I don't see you there, but. <laughs> oh, I'm there, the 50 yeah. York was there. Okay, uh, but if, if um, actually, if uh, John Lopez is here. Yes, uh, I, I I am here. Oh, hey, I'm Hello, gonna, Commander. I'm, I'm, I am here, and uh, the the picture before that you saw the British officer on horseback, that is me. Aha, yeah, rushing officer. up the hill. Okay, let me, let me tell people who you are, John, because if you don't know that the BAR, the Brigade of the American Revolution, is a national um, reenactment group. And when I was able to tell uh, John the news that this location, because of Dave Delusia mostly in our, really primarily in our counties, Department of Parks that this was going to be available. I have to say, and, jo and John, you can take it from here, that this is a pretty big opportunity. Am I right? Oh, no, absolutely. The enthusiasm for, for us on the living history side absolutely goes right through the roof when we heard that Pound Ridge was available to celebrate uh, the 250th. We had an awesome time during the 225th. And as you can see, the numbers for this reenactment was absolutely huge. It was it was probably close to around three to 500 troops of various different branches from, from cavalry to infantry. You got the Hessians right there in front, Continentals, British regulars, loyalists, everybody was there. We even had people uh, fly in all the way from California, Canada, and I do believe we had a few from England that made the trip over for this. And when word came out that Ward Pound Ridge was back on for 2026, I could tell you now that the enthusiasm is, is very high and people can't wait to uh, come over and do this again. Oh, well, we are so excited that your organization and your other is the Continental Line and the British Brigade, did I get that right? Yes, yes, and the commander is online with you guys presently as well from right. the British Brigade. So hopefully Good. at the end of this, we'll have a little more time for those people who really, um, but uh, who are super interested in this. I hope every family around, hi Jim. <laughs> I don't know if we'll have time to share right now, but without the British, I guess we've got nothing happening here, right? <laughs> so <laughs> we're, really glad we're really glad you're into this. I know I, I'm going to, pretend to know something about military history, but I hope you all back me up. My enthusiasm is there. My, my knowledge level is not so great, but um, I, just look at those people who are watching this. It was a big thing. Um, and I'm so glad that our efforts, along with the county's efforts and everybody showing they really wanted this to, to make this happen in 2026. I think there are some major tax dollars that are going to come from this. So can I switch over? I don't know if Ben Boykin, are you still here? Because, um, uh, I, yeah, General, ben, who, I, still, I am still here, General. Good, good, How are you good, doing? <laughs> good evening, everyone. How are you doing? You know, first of all, um, I think this is fantastic uh, to really have Revolutionary Westchester 250's um, volunteer appreciation party. This is all being put together by volunteers. And, you know, it takes a lot of people working hard to put something together, even though it's going to be in 26, <laughs> that actually is going to be moving forward into the 30s. So there's a lot of work that goes into that. History of our nation is so important because unless you understand your history, you can't understand where you are and really where you're going. It is really, really important. And as you know, White Plains play a very strategic role. The Battle Hill, the Battle of Battle Hill. In fact, if you're coming yeah. on the train station and you look up, that's Battle Hill. Yeah. You go up on Battle Hill, there's the park right there where the battle took place. Then you move over to the party on Park Avenue, where each October there's a reenactment where George Washington was. Again, above, you can look down, you can look right down into the city. So that is so important that these items get captured as we talk about Revolutionary Westchester 2020. And then you go farther up 
remember, we rehabbed the Miller House. Yes. And, uh, no. in fact, yes. I was there at the opening of the Miller House, and many of you were there when we reopened that facility that had been foul and vacant for many, many years. The county has put money into this project, and the Board of Legislators, all 17 of us, have put money into this project also. So we are so pleased and proud to be able to support this. The important thing that we want to remember is we want to be involved. I think it is important, if you have not, that you reach out to the schools so that we can get children involved in this because they need to understand the history. And let me also say, I think it's important that we reach out to people of color and make sure that they're involved in this, right? It is all of us, this is history. It's not I, true. I we could all need to be it. So again, I'm pleased to be with you. Unfortunately, I've got to run to another function this afternoon, but let me say the Board of Legislators, all 17 members that I know that Majority Leader, uh, Mary Jane Shimpke is on, I know that Legislator Terry Clemens is on, I don't know if others are on, but if they are, I'm glad that they've joined us. And let me say, keep up the great work. We look further for additional advancements and, and presentations like this. You bet. Thank you very much, General. Keep up the work and keep the <laughs> coaches in line. Thank you. <laughs> Chairman Boykin, you are you are my hero. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, I I'm seeing my little um, messages about who's here. I have there's so many people that I'm so excited are here. Um, I had promised that Senator Mayor at two thirty uh, would have the floor. I know she's here, and I know Senator. Uh, Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins is here um, as well. Um, so um, this is this is like so exciting for me. But I would like to switch to uh, Senator Mayor if you are willing right now, uh, Shelley. Sure. I'm thank you, thank you, Congressman. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you, Joe, because I was getting excited uh, when you were talking about all these opportunities. <laughs> uh, going forward and seeing those fantastic pictures. I really need those pictures okay. in order to do what I am working on with Constance. So first place, thank you for your generalship and thank you to all the, everyone else, the volunteers, the board members. I didn't quite have the Linda Puglisi story, but I had a similar story where my father growing up here in Yonkers took us to see historical sites as young children. And it was a life-changing experience that I find as the chair of the education committee, so many of our kids have no exposure to. And the reenactment concept is something that you can relate to as a kid, as opposed to something in a book, is so powerful. So uh, working with Constance and many others throughout the state, I am introducing the 250th um, bill we call the what is our correct name here the 250th Operation. commission bill yes. and uh, i'm doing it with my colleague in the assembly carrie warner from the uh saratoga community where there's also a tremendous interest and also really a relevant past mm -hmm. and we are uh we have with constance's help and with a number of other people including mary jane and others we've broadened the bill from last year. It doesn't have a number yet, but it has been introduced. We'll have a number shortly. And the idea is to create this commission that one, uh, allows the organization of a plan, a statewide plan to boost tourism, economic activity, from an education point of view, give kids, and I'm so glad you talked about inclusiveness because our kids here in Yonkers and Port Chester and Ossining and Peekskill have to see this as much as the kids from you know, Scarsdale and Mamaronick. We need every child to get a sense of this American history and to have a conversation about it. And you are making that happen. Thank you to my colleagues in county government, to George Latimer and the county board for their commitment to having Ward Pound Ridge be available for this uh, reenactment. But the bill is gonna create a commission. This commission is going to be able to apply and draw down federal funds we're gonna make a pitch this year, tough year for some 
first first uh, cache of state funds, but we don't know, but we'll keep working on that. But we're creating commissions going to be based in the parks department and jointly run with the state education department and have a broad uh, a broad spectrum of folks involved, including groups like uh, Revolutionary Westchester 250 throughout the state who will have the opportunity to be real leaders in designing a plan which must be formalized and adopted by the commission and then presented to the legislature. So we have, we have the time, we have the drive, we're gonna to have to fight for the money, yeah. but we have your leadership and we have a such a great partner in local and county government. And I think we're going to have tremendous buy-in across the state. Yes. I talked to my assembly colleague yesterday, Friday, Carrie, knowing I was gonna to talk today, and we're very much on the same page. And she's quite a dynamo who I know very well. And we're gonna bring in all the historical sites and the opportunity, as I said, for an inclusive group of students right here in Westchester to have real access to the history, uh, to this incredible commemoration. So I'm very, very pleased. Constance has been a fantastic general in legislative drafting as well, her new field of excellence. I had no idea. <laughs> and um, with my, with my uh, counsel, Andy Booter, working closely to improve the bill and make it closer to what we need, we can always continue to fine tune it but we are getting it in. It went in on Friday to get a number and it will be the same as the one in the assembly they put in last year's just as a placeholder, but we'll be exactly on the same page and we're gonna push ahead and hopefully I'll have the support. I know of my colleagues and you mentioned Pete Harkum and I, I know the leader is here, but um, this is a really exciting project and I so appreciate the scope of interest and the fact that we are going to talk about what happens happened right here in our county, so close to home. Yes. So with that, I will stop and thank you again, all of you for participating. And and hopefully you'll be you'll be tasked with helping us get this over the finish line. Yes. Oh well, Senator Mayor, this is it's so it's so heartwarming to me to have your partnership. I mean, we 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 knew there was interest here in Westchester, and to reach out to you and just like that. Yes, I think, I think this is a bill that I should sponsor. Um, your colleague, um, Senator Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins, I believe, is she's here waiting here. And there, and I think uh, if I'm allowed to, because Andrea is my <laughs> state senator <laughs> here in Irvington, I think I get to call her. Andrea on occasion. You do. You do. You do. <laughs> Thank you. You do. You've, you've got you've got such a big title now, and it's so exciting. Mm. I, your your support from day one when I met you, which was a long time ago, <laughs> um, in terms of history, libraries. I see Terry Kirchner is also on with us, but please share your thoughts. And I I know I picked up from your office some lovely uh, certificates that I have here too. So. Right. Well, thank you, Connie. I, you know, I just so enjoy you, your leadership, your enthusiasm, and your willingness to really make sure that we honor our history throughout this county. Uh, I've been, you know, with you from the beginning when you've done historic things in Irvington. Uh, and, you know, just, just, you're amazing. And you're, we're fortunate because we have so many people who are historians and, you know, I know Mary Jane is on and, and, you know, there's just, there's just the ability in our county to pull these things all together. So, uh, you know, I, I am just thrilled to say thank you to the volunteers who do this because we're all focused, you know, sadly, especially uh, people like you know, me and, you know, Shelly and uh, Ben and Latimer and, you know, all of us, we're all focused on today. And today is a tough, tough day when you think about all the things that are happening in our, our world. However, we have a country that has roots right here in our county, right here in our state. And as Ben said, if you want to talk about how we got here, and if you want to talk about the future, 
it's always good to have a working relationship with our history. And no matter what, it is our history and we should embrace it. We should know it. And we should know what people went through to get us to this place. And the reenactment and the drama around it, you know, the, the, the different, you know, whether it's the Miller House or the Purdy House or the Odell House, and, you know, all of these places that are symbolic uh, and, and real about where, where fights happen, where people stayed or where they didn't stay, all of that, all of that just makes it alive for us and for our children. And as, as Senator Mayer was saying, and I'm sure, you know, everybody, uh, you know, who will speak and, you know, we have to engage, we have to engage our children so that they understand, you know, what, what we built and what it's been built on. And you, Connie, and the volunteers and Joe and all of the people who I don't know, who I'm looking forward to me, who are building a platform for us to stand and for us to, to, to explain and for us to engage so that we can be proud of what we've done and be prouder still to know that we can always do things better, but we have to do them together. So Connie, I can't promise you know what's going to happen, but Shelly's got a bill. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sure we can we can uh, get get the bill through. I'm sure we're just as good at begging at money, begging for money as everybody else. <laughs> Lord knows, <laughs> you know. Thank you, thank you for thinking about the past, but giving us enough time in the future to get to the money. So I think you've got a winning formula as well as a win winning team. So, so thank you for not only focusing on today and tomorrow, focusing on yesterday and letting us know how important it is that we focus on all three in order to be strong. So thanks so much for letting me, letting me say a few words. Oh, letting you, You're, you've been an inspiration, especially about libraries. That's the thing I remember you most about. Yeah. Yes. And my thought about how to spread the word to people across Westchester really um, depends on libraries. I mean, we're not going to in we're not going to be inside all these schools, but we can be inside all the libraries. And that's one of my key ways of getting um, the word out. Um, well. You know, I mean, as I always say, libraries for me when I was growing up, you know, I mean, that's how I went places, you know, I, I, I went places by, by reading and I got my books from, from the library. I had a library card very early in life. You know, we lived in the projects and my mother would walk me over to the library, me and my brother. So, I mean, the libraries have always had a very, very special place. And like I said, it's, 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 it's where people can lift off and soar. Yes. So, yeah. well, and you know, we have a new libraries committee. Uh, I, I uh, have a, a library, the Senate never had a libraries oh. committee, but this year we've created a committee on libraries. Uh, Senator Sean Ryan of uh, Buffalo is the chair. So be in touch with him as well. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you, Andrea. I don't know, thank you don't have to take care of a snowstorm, I don't think, but <laughs> I we, know, lost, we lost <laughs> Linda Puglisi to the snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody better than Linda, you know. <laughs> but but thank, thank you. you so much. And I, I guess these, uh, like these beautiful things which we'll get to towards the end, but you, your office is always takes a personal interest in people I know as individuals. So we thank you for that and uh, knock them dead up there in Albany. <laughs> okay, thanks. You know, I, I think our library director, Terry Kirchner is here. Terry, are you still here? I saw your name a little while ago. Did you want to just say a word about libraries if you are still with us? I am still here. Yeah, um, good, hi Terry. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for all the library love. Um, definitely made my day. Uh, <laughs> No, really, I'm just excited that we're able to be your partner in this. Um, clearly, there's so many opportunities to foster community engagement, lifelong learning. I mean, we can help people understand the value of democracy. You know, what, what do we really stand for and what does it mean? 
and the libraries are a great way to learn this in a safe and fun environment. So we're ready. You know, right. let's let's do this. <laughs> Lord knows we need it. <laughs> no, I'm so looking forward to this. Our our funding from the county this year is to expand the use of our videos. So we have these three minute videos. They're perfect for libraries and they could use them today. But I feel like if we make a greater outreach through your help and you know, however we get to all the librarians and say, what ideas do you have to use these? Cause we'll, we'll try to help. So you're, you're my key guy this year. <laughs> so. All right. Well, sure. I'll be available. So Thank we'll you. get in, we'll make this work. Mm. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Terry. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> All right. So I, um, I don't, um, I, I would like to get back to a little more of our um, pictures um, and our, um, our, um, actually our, our video. I would be very happy to show one of our videos. We have one of the videos that we made is about Phillips Manor Hall. Um, in the Yonkers, and that video, there it is. <laughs> we can, you can get us a, a feel for what we have done through our funding from the county. Uh, Mitch, go ahead and let's show that. Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1, 1863. It declared that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. History records that this was the moment when America's enslaved peoples were freed, but this was not the first time such a proclamation had been made. In fact, it had happened some 84 years earlier, just a stone's throw from the Hudson River in downtown Yonkers, New York, in what today is the oldest building in Westchester, Phillips Manor Hall. It was the family seat of Frederick Phillips III, who owned the massive Phillipsburg Manor, a 52,000-acre estate that stretched along the Hudson River, encompassing much of western and lower Westchester. During the Revolution, Phillips remained a loyalist, and the hall was at times used as a headquarters by the British. It was here, in the summer of 1779, that Lieutenant General Sir Henry Clinton, commander of all British forces in North America, issued his Phillipsburg Proclamation. It offered freedom to any enslaved person of African descent who would leave their patriot enslavers to go behind British lines where they could either join the British Army or pursue any occupation which he shall think proper, a tempting offer. But Clinton's real goal was not abolition. His purpose was to destroy an important source of American labor by confiscating the enemy's enslaved population. Accordingly, loyalists were not covered by the proclamation. The enslaved people in those households would continue in bondage. As many as 2,000 enslaved men, women, and children did escape to find refuge with the British in New York City, and many more in South Carolina and Virginia but their fate was by no means secure. Many were returned or sold back into bondage, and those that did attain legal freedom experienced pervasive racism and discrimination. After the war, the confiscated lands of Phillipsburg Manor were sold at public auction, purchased primarily by the former tenant farmers, some of whom continued to depend upon the involuntary labor of enslaved persons until New York finally abolished slavery in 1827. Today, Phillips Manor Hall is a state historic site. It serves as a museum of history, art, and architecture, as well as host to community meetings, educational programs, and special events in the heart of a thriving downtown and waterfront district in southern Westchester County. Thank you. And that was 
funded by the county, but also with a lot of volunteer work that went into that. Um, there are many stories in Westchester that are important. They're big ideas. They're important things to um, explore. Um, I, I know we have one uh, visitor, and if um, I can ask uh, Judith Kealora, who some of you know as uh, the performer, the actor who portrays Deborah Sampson, as well as many others. I, I believe, Mitch, you could put back up the, uh, the slide, if you wish, um, that has the women at war, because um, I've been very um, interested in attracting, not to getting families with, with girls and not to think that somehow the Revolutionary War is only of interest to, to boys. So um, I would, uh, uh, Deborah, um, <laughs> I bet people do this all the time. So I call my friend, if you would like to share a little bit of words about why we, we why this is important, please, you have a perspective. <laughs> Thank you, first of all, to Connie and to uh, Rev Revolutionary Westchester 250 for inviting me to make a few remarks about Deborah and the inclusion of her story and of all women's stories in our celebration of the American Revolution and its history. Um, Deborah is a woman who I have had in my life for over 16 years. She is how I started the company History at Play, which is an immersive educational performance troupe, which brings brings educational escapism, virtual experiences, on-site productions uh, to people all over the United States and now since COVID-19 all over the world with our live stream series, series that we're offering, pardon me. Deborah was the first woman that I ever uh, discovered and portrayed and using primary sources, tracked her entire life from her, her very humble beginnings as an indentured servant in Massachusetts Bay Colony throughout her uh, first a failed enlistment attempt as Timothy Thayer of Carver, Massachusetts, and then almost a year later, a successful enlistment as Robert Shirtliff into the Massachusetts 4th Regiment of the Continental Army. Thereby, she was sent almost direct to New York, to the Hudson River Valley and Westchester County, where she and her fellow brothers in arms were really responsible for holding off what were known as loyalist cowboys. And these were uh, loyal uh, soldiers that were irregular. They were not commissioned by the British Empire. They were fighting for the love of country, for the love of King George III, and for the sake of Parliament. And they were known for being pretty uh, troublesome because they liked to steal cattle, which was why they were known as cowboys. So Deborah spends about 18 months of active combat and active duty in these areas that we are discussing today that are so pertinent to the revolutionary story and to our, our, our existence as an independent and United States of America. She is injured uh, in Terrytown. She is involved in skirmishes near East Chester. And I was fortunate to, um, to meet Connie. Connie sort of discovered the work that I was doing as a Deborah Sampson living historian and invited me to perform in the program called A Revolution of her own, which I wrote back in 2010, and um, have fortunately, even in spite of the pandemic, have performed continuously since um, since that time. And we've got over 1,500 runs of that production under our under my belt and under our troops' belt. But oh. one of the favorite performances was at Phillips uh, Manor Hall. Oh. <laughs> that was uh, that was really one of the most wonderful experiences. So I want to say thank you for that November nineteenth, twenty nineteen performance, and also at Caramore last year, at uh, the Performing Music and Arts Center, we did uh, do that same program for the Westchester County Historical Society. And one last thing I want to say before I, I introduce this skit, I know that um, Michael Grillo, who portrays a, portrays a wonderful General George Washington, and a surprise a surprise actor who we'll all recognize, um, they will be coming onto our screen momentarily to give us a little bit of fun, is this aspect of immersive living history, this aspect of educational escapism, this aspect, as folks are mentioning, of bringing 
students, young and old, uh, into this life of reenacting. This is something that's so important and we don't need to feel limited by COVID-19 and by this global health crisis. We can reach through the screen and actually uh, have virtual experiences with youngsters. Um, history of Play offers programming that chronicles over 200 years of history from the American Revolution all the way up through Krista McAuliffe, Teacher in Space, and the NASA Space Shuttle Program. And a very important to note is just on January 5th uh, of this year, 2021, the United States Congress finally finally signed into the law the Deborah Sampson Act, which does provide uh, improved resources in the veterans affairs and uh, veterans hospitals all over this nation for women. It provides greater maternity days for VA for helping to care for women who are seeking employment. It provides more female doctors and better uh, a better environment for caring for women who have been serving our country since the inception of this nation. We all, we all know women were on the front lines, whether they were we're giving credit for it or not. And so we're finally bringing light to those stories of influential and often forgotten women. So thank you very much, everyone, for your time. Thank you to Connie to invite, for inviting me here. And promise me that you will make history. Oh, <laughs> Judith, you are an inspiration. When you were at Phillips Manor Hall, and I, I, didn't, I know Robert Lee is also here. He's the uh, program person there. Um, you brought people to tears. There was a parent who came up with a daughter who just said she she can't believe this story. And so I know the power of your performance um, and we are dedicated to trying to bring young people and have other people by whatever avenue they need to get connected to their local history. And you've certainly done your part. So we will try to do ours. And I, I know you have other things to, to get to too. So thank I'm, you. I'm going to add, and I just and, and, and thank you for in, and just remember re appreciating that performance. It was particularly special. It introduced me to some great new audiences and patrons in the Westchester County area. And it was just a beautiful building and the, and the light and it played such a cool effect on, you know, using these, when I'm touring to places that I've not performed performed in before, I have to use what the venue offers in terms of natural lighting, in terms of effects to really make that performance very site specific. It's almost like a, like doing a, a parlor play, but in a historic site. So the light and just the energy in that building just really brought me to a different level of performance. And so I see a lot of friends on here today and I wanna say thanks for all of you for your support. I'm gonna put some websites and uh, documents in the chat box so folks can learn more about Deborah and what history of play does. Thank you again, Connie. All right. Thank you so much. Boy, she was she's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you if you haven't seen this yet, you will. She'll be back to Westchester. <laughs> this pandemic will be over. <laughs> uh, right, right, right. Well, um, there's so many things that um, we want to move on to. Um, I, I do feel like that Robert Lee, because you are the state parks representative here. I think you really ought to say something quickly about now that we've talked about Phillips Manor Hall. So Rob, are you there? I'm, I'm here. How's everybody doing? Okay. Um, yeah, so, you know, we've been involved since essentially Connie first started conceptualizing everything. And I know that if everyone heard the, the state of the state address, there are some big, big plans eventually in the works for Phillips Manor Hall. Um, but sticking on the topic though, one of the main things that we are really focusing on is, is really bringing to light this George Washington and Mary Phillips narrative that really for decades and decades and centuries really got swept under the carpet. So we actually, based on Mary Calvey's book, Dear George, Dear Mary, um, are conceptualizing a great new tour that really delves into the, the history behind Mary Phillips, George Washington, and, and how a lot of the impact contributed to eventually George Washington being pushed against the British. Um, so we have a tour coming out um, on Saturday the 13th, February 13th at one o'clock. It is an in-person tour. So it is because of the style of the museum, it is uh, able to be socially distant in there. Um, so come get, your, come get your tickets if you'd like to come. But also based on that, we were actually part of a, a Smithsonian series, America's Hidden Mysteries, that's going to be airing uh, Monday, February 15th. 
uh, and it features Mary Calvi um, as well as ourselves going into that uh, narrative um, and just exploring the fact that this is something that really was forgotten about and puts Yonkers directly in the forefront of how our, how our country really came to be. And it really just, again, just highlights that the importance of Westchester and how we were able to really focal point in that early part of history. Uh, Bob, we're kind of we're kind of losing you. I'm, I'm afraid. Um, so I don't mean to cut you off, but I I guess I will. <laughs> Thank you because Bob is really the only person here from the state of the Park Department, and that's really critical. Um, so um, I, okay, I hear some noise in the background. I'm not sure what that is, but if somebody needs to that mute. That was yeah, okay, great. Um, so, um, <laughs> boy, um, so much going on. Um, I'm going to ask a few more people to share some thoughts, but first let's move on on the next slide because um, you'll see that when, um, when you heard uh, several people talk about, and myself as well, about viewing this commemoration, this 250th, as fully um, inclusive, and, and we mean that. Um, we won't talk specifically about this slide right now, but um, you'll understand that the Native um, Indigenous people will be very much part of our commemoration. And the next slide, uh, Mitch, um, takes you to um, somebody that I have to introduce you to now because you will see him um, on the side uh, in the audience around this photograph. Yes, there is um, um, trustee and my friend Dwayne Jackson, um, who is a reenactor and a Yorktown, well, he's a Buchanan trustee. And this is the, um, the very important new, well, new 2018, um, uh, uh, statue monument to the first Rhode Island regiment. So Dwayne, if you could just share a few words about your experience with this um, this part of history, we'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you, Connie. And thanks for everyone that's on the call and their volunteerism for this exciting program that we look forward to continuing. Uh, the Pine Bridge Memorial, uh, I got introduced to it about 18 years ago by Paul Martin who was uh, involved with the Yorktown Historical Society. And when I heard the story that here, these 139 odd soul former slaves were sent from Providence, Rhode Island to join General Washington's army and fought the battle of Pines Bridge on May 14th, 1781. I said, what a fantastic story. We've got to get this word out. And I became involved in, and then as uh, many of you see the, on the uh, picture here, the, uh, the statue, uh, which was the great job done uh, that shows the uh, Lieutenant Colonel Green, uh, my forefather, uh, the, the slave and a Native American. And it was the first time in American, soon to be American history that you had this coming together of patriots in the cause of freedom. And that can't be undenied by, by anyone. You know, the story of how these uh, people came from Providence, Rhode Island, that were in slavery to fight for their freedom had, when they survived the battle uh, or battles of, of the Revolutionary War. And it's so significant. And one of those little stories that's so uh, Jermaine here to Westchester, that it happened uh, right along uh, up in Yorktown Heights and that the uh, magnificent people of the Hudson Valley gave, you know, tens and twenties and 50 cents to have this uh, statue made. And I, I encourage anyone uh, who's never seen it to go uh, to Commerce Avenue in Yorktown and, and view it. And it's a, a magnificent work uh, for sure. But one of the other things is that along with my, my neighbor and my longtime friend for the last 30 years, Joe Ryan, uh, uh, who taught 
uh, my daughter uh, in the regiments that he did in uh, back in, in Peekskill, we were at uh, Pataki's inauguration and he had the kids out there and it's such a great uh, story that Joe has been able to do over the years in terms of keeping our young people involved, taking them up to Ticonderoga, camping out and fitting the whole regiment with equipment and teaching that living history. And it's so important that we continue uh, that effort. And I'm just so excited to, to be involved in this. And I, and I put this out here to any and everyone, and I'll put my information up on the chat that I will go to any elementary, middle school, high school, whatever, in all of Westchester to give my interpretation of what those first Rhode Island uh, men did uh, in that beginning of the true American patriots that went forward to fight for not only their individual freedom, but for the freedom of our great country. Oh, Dwayne, that is, that's great. That, I mean, if, 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 it, if we'd all did a, <laughs> applause, that's what you would hear. I'm gonna put on my list to get you to some of the libraries too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, would, absolutely. Great, when we're back into real life, that, won't be won't be too long from now but that this is all part of a big effort um and yorktown is very um critical to this i i, I don't know if matt slater um yorktown uh, um uh, uh yorktown supervisor is here uh big supporter big supporter. yes yes he he was planning to i'm you know there's snow problems and all that but Matt, if you do show up, let me know. And uh, we'd love to hear from you because Yorktown has so much history. So Dwayne, thank you. Stay, stay uh, along. Thank you. Someone <laughs> asked in the chat if Dwayne can put his contact information in the chat so other people can reach out to him. Right. Yeah, is, absolutely. Right, yes, that's that's great. Schools and libraries and, and uh, you know, I, I know everybody's excited about this. Um, and we have a newsletter every month um, um, and you'll be, seeing when we get to the awards, finally, <laughs> um, you'll be meeting our digital communication team that gets recognized. Uh, but the first, um, I, I think where we are is to, for me to introduce, uh, boy, there's so many things that I, 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 need to, I need to say that the second set of videos that you saw the first one of the first set of videos that are done but if if scott um Keller is still here scott has uh from the greenway has funded a new set of videos for rw to make and um scott if you hear would you share a little bit about your vision of the 250th and um what we're doing here in westchester I did see, I did see him earlier. Scott, Scott. <laughs> uh, all right, well, so I, um, well, I, what I can move on to, uh, the companion to Scott's funding is we needed a filmmaker to make these new films for us that are gonna focus on individuals um, um, and, for sure, one is, a, is about a woman, and for sure, one is on a person of color from Westchester. And so Nader, uh, who is also from Irvington, along with myself, um, is our filmmaker for this upcoming series. So Nader, if you're here for a second, do you wanna say hello? Uh, gladly, thank you, Connie. Uh, obviously, happy to be able to help. Uh, I would second this uh, enthusiasm I have for this um, this idea of living history. I think what is powerful about video as a medium, as a kind of a pedagogical tool, is the ability to create a sense of immediacy with the subjects that we're trying to understand and to add a level, a kind of a texture and nuance to the subject that I think really in my view really kind of complicates that history in interesting ways and creates a kind of a me, I don't know, kind of a, it, it opens the door to interpretation and to having kind of a pluralistic understanding of our history, which I think is a valuable kind of democratic, um, uh, a, a valuable democratic 
let's say, uh, endeavor in this moment. So uh, I'm just, I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, I'm excited to work with Connie and with this uh, historian, Eric, that is apparently helping us who are doing all the real work and I'm more of a facilitator. Um, so yeah, I'm, and I look forward to meeting more of the people in this community. Uh, this is my first, my first opportunity to speak uh, with most of you and hear from most of you. So, so thank you, Connie. You're, you're so welcome. We're so happy to find a history enthusiast who actually knows something about film as well, um, because we have a message that we want to convey and we need to use all kinds of creative ways to do it. And uh, we're glad you agreed to join our team. And yes, we'll get we'll get to work with Eric uh, Weiselberg, who is our, um, our village historian our history teacher at Irvington High School and our RW250 historian as well. Um, I know Eric is with us today, but I, I know we have to keep moving along here as it's like this pressure to get to the next thing. Thank you, Nadu, thank, thank you so much. Um, so we talked about creativity, we've talked about young people, we've talked about um, how to get people pulled into an interest in local history. So the, of the five topics that I said we would be focusing on our new initiatives, um, we have talked um, about the state level planning, um, we, but I, did, I do believe I've left out um, one of our, our state assembly person, Tom Abenanti. So before I move on to our creative, be creative um, endeavor, if Tom, you're still here, please. Um, we need everybody on the state to help us that we can. Um, are you here, Tom? Yes, I am, Connie. How are you? Yes, hi. <laughs> uh, let me start off by, um, by thanking you and commending you and your team for doing such a great job. Um, you, you're preparing our community uh, for the 250th anniversary with the proper perspective, with the proper context, giving everybody an understanding of what actually happened in history. Uh, you're doing it factually based, which is really so important. Uh, letting people understand how we touch what happened because we now occupy the lands that were so crucial to so many of the events um, in, in way back then 250 years ago. Um, you know, Greenberg, which I represent, and Mount Pleasant, which I represent, uh, we're an area of, of so many significant happenings. Aside from the Battle of White Plains, which everybody thinks of Battle Hill, actually part of Battle Hill is actually in Greenberg, uh, but that whole event over there. But we also have the Rochambeau Trail. We have Patriots Park in Tarrytown for a reason. It's there because it marked an event. Uh, you know, we have Washington's headquarters in White Plains, but we also, I used to live in Orchard Hill and there was a George Washington's farmhouse there where he was, I, it's the, the, the story is that he was directing the Battle of White Plains from over in uh, up the hill in, in Greenberg. Um, and then of course the Hudson River itself is just, is just so much of what happened way back then. So it's, you're, you're giving as the previous speaker just said a living history, um, you're adding texture to what would otherwise to so many people just be a one dimension one dimensional page in a, in a history book. So you're, you're giving life to it. You let, you're attracting people at a time when there's so much else going on. If it, even without the pandemic, there's so much else going on. So you are attracting people to this. You're giving them an understanding, a, a texture to this history. And it's really so important that we prepare our community, actually our state and our whole country with a real understanding of what the revolution was all about yes. and how did we get to the country we have and what does this country really mean? I don't wanna get political on this, but this is, it, it's not the battles that were important. It's not being the patriots that were important. It was the principles that they were fighting for that is important. And, and we've got to have, have everybody really understand what those principles are, what it's all about, how people of all different races, cultures, backgrounds, whatever, came together because they saw a common purpose. They united and produced these United States. So once again, I want to commend you 
everybody who's on this video and everybody who's been working with you. Keep up the great job. I'm looking forward to working with you and I'm looking forward to, to the 250th anniversary as a really important um, um, landmark in, 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 our, in our history. Um, so thank you again and thanks for letting me join you today. Oh, yes. Well, listen, uh, Tom, this is, we need everybody at the state who supports this and the county. And I'm now honored <laughs> for my friend, George Latimer, our county executive, who has been such a supporter. As I said, we need the state, we need the county, we need Linda Puglisi, we need Ben Boykin, we need Mary Jane Shinsky. We need them all. So George, say hello. Thank Thank you, Connie. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Obviously, we all owe you a great uh, debt of gratitude for the work that you're doing, you and your committee, but you are the engine that is, uh, you know, that's driving the train on this celebration. And, it, and it's really satisfying. The county government is a full partner with you in whatever way you need us. I know that you've recognized Mary Jane Shimsky, Terry Clements, who are online as county legislators. Uh, we do things between the legislative and the executive branch as close together as we can. I also have Ellen Hendricks on the line. She's our intergovernmental uh, coordinator, but she's been a municipal official. She was a town councilwoman in, in Greenberg. Um, and so um, we see this interaction across all these different levels of government to be supportive of you. Just as Tom just finished saying as a state assemblyman, uh, so do we at the county support this. You know, it's an interesting thing. I, I have a bachelor's degree in history from Fordham mm -hmm. University. And, you know, when I got the degree, some friends of mine said, what are you gonna do with a bachelor's degree in history? And I said, I, I really don't know, you know, I don't, I'm a historian and uh, I was going into law like most of my friends did. So it took me about now almost 50 years, 46 years since I, 47 years since I graduated college. I now have some value in my history degree. It's being able to uh, be part of the appreciation of what 250 years since the Revolutionary War means. And I think very importantly that, um, you know, we're looking now about issues of constitutionality in our country and the traditions in our country, this is when those traditions were established. And it was an imperfect country then and an imperfect country now. The founding fathers were great men and the founding mothers too, but they were imperfect as we are imperfect now. And that is a great lesson of history, that it is never perfect human beings, but it is each of us rising to the maximum of our ability to be able to keep and sustain this democracy. We just spent uh, some money in the last couple of years to. Um, restore the Miller House, the Washington headquarters site in North Castle. Uh, and we had help from the state, thank David Buckwald, former assemblyman uh, for financial assist on that. And when somebody says, well, why was that important? I said, because George Washington is more important than George Latimer. We have connections in this county to the founding of this nation, John Jay, uh, with, a, with a prominent presence in this area. The names that we're familiar with, Hamilton, John Adams, they all came through this county. Uh, the, you know, uh, they, they stayed at the inns and the taverns that, that we have still managed to maintain over the years. So this is a great effort. Uh, the county government will be fully behind you. And let me say that, you know, whatever the length of my tenure is, it will not extend into 2026. So one way or the other, I won't be county executive when 2026 rolls around, which shows how much we are committed. It's not about what what we do as individuals right now and what brownie points we can get. It's about something that's bigger than all of us. And that's why I'm so proud that we're all together, Connie, uh, working yeah. on this initiative together. Thank you for your leadership. It's, uh, I think, I, I, I definitely thank all the people who um, are here, who are part of this, who are, you call it my team. I got called a general at the beginning of this. Maybe you missed that, right? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> that was funny, but <laughs> I have so much fun with you. We we can go uh, toe to toe with you know your your uh, your your love of Thomas Paine, my love of John Paulding. We can <laughs> we can have a lot of fun with that, and I plan to. But. Um, I know there, there are other things and other parts of this initiative I want to get to, especially my recognition of all these people, because it's hardly about me. So I'm going to ask um, Mitch uh, Bard, who is our <laughs> Zoom master here, to in just a moment put up um, a, a simple little video that shows what I am asking you all today to think about, and that is 
what are the other avenues that uh, people use to get involved in history? We looked at reenactments, but what if that's not your thing? We looked at, you know, hearing a slide presentation or watching, but there are lots of different creative ways that I think can lead people into a love of history. We have two examples today. We have a young woman, um, Frida Bajak from Dobbs Ferry, who you're gonna hear play the violin of some um, early uh, period pieces of music. And you're also gonna meet Lila Walsh, another young woman that just out of college, who we are now um, asking, <laughs> cajoling to be our intern. And she's been volunteering with us. Um, so um, I wanna show you a little skit uh, because it's a little attempt to um, show you that what I'm calling a minute a month is, the concept I have in my head that we could actually have a little one minute video. It could be any kind of creative endeavor. And I really need people to brainstorm with me on this. But um, what what brings people into loving history? What what George Latimer might use to get involved in history? What what Constance Keogh might get? It, it may not be the same for what Lila or, or Andrea or someone else uses as their avenue to get excited about something. So um, I, I think maybe it's best before we see this video to hear just a, a word from uh, these young people because you're gonna see a video that has a professional in it. That is Michael Grillo, who you've heard, who is George Washington to many of you. And um, a, person of little talent, but a lot of heart. <laughs> Thank you, my husband says. <laughs> and um, we're gonna see that little skit. Um, and it's gonna be a way to introduce the idea of how do we get into local history? But, but first, um, uh, Frida, are, are you here online? And would you like to just say a minute about your uh, violin playing and what you got out of that? I think Frida is still with us. Or um, Frida? yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi. 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 Dobbsbury High School. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was it was interesting for me because like you know I'm like I'm a classically trained violinist. So and I I don't usually play stuff like this like from the from the Revolutionary Era. Um, and I tend to be yeah because of how I was trained. I play like you know you know, classic, mostly classical stuff. So this was like interesting because I got to play stuff that I I normally wouldn't. And I got to like expose myself with a different um, music from a completely different era. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. And I also really enjoyed it too. There were, I was like playing around with like some of the other pieces um, from that era and they were all just so interesting and just like, it just like kind of, learning about these new pieces was really fascinating to me with, you know, not a lot of background in this time period. So yeah, I think it was a, it was a great experience for me. Oh, well, I'm glad you could share that because I hope it's a bit of an inspiration as people are watching this thinking, oh, I know somebody who might like to get involved in some way with this local history and it, it worked for you. We are going to hear you on that, on that video. Uh, that'll be the, uh, second to the next one <laughs> but thank you so much and we're we hope to see a lot more of you because we got a lot more music and we need your help so thanks a lot um, thank you so much that um i also want to if lila um lila walsh are you with us um if you are uh Tell yes hi lila we just want to thank you we're going to be honoring you in many ways mm -hmm. but uh, if you just want to share a few words about your involvement with yeah, us sure. Yeah. Um, I had a great time filming you and editing you. Um, it's a great part of like being able to give back to my community. Um, I am a Dobbs Ferry High School graduate and a college graduate one year out. And so being able to come back to my community, help out, and also with the subject that I'm very interested in. So in, in 
being able to combine my love of like history and video is just a great opportunity. And thank you so much for having me on board. Well, we, we have a lot more to thank you for yeah. than, than you to thank us. But again, as, as we have, what, 80 some people with us, um, mm. I think there may be other people out there who think, hmm, maybe I'd like to experiment with what ways can I entice either myself or, or others to be involved in this? So whether it's film, whether it's uh, music, it could be dance, it could be a lot of things, but in your case, you're interested in film and uh, we're glad we, we found you. So I'm gonna ask Mitch now with that introduction, <laughs> <laughs> if you all will indulge in, in a minute of, 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 of an amateur and <laughs> we'll see where we are. Okay, let's see this minute long creation here. the good general and uh, the commander in the Continental Army decided to use the colors we're familiar with. This is actually rarity. You're very lucky to have a bayonet because right now there's very few uh, troops that we have that actually own a bayonet. We are short on supplies. Might be a ham hock. I don't know what animal this came from. I must be on my way yes. home. Thank you and good, good job. Good to see you. Okay, so you see, um, you see that you had an opportunity to see um, a, an example of a minute of a way that might bring some people into this. Now, don't use me as an example, but if I can do it, if I can try this, anybody can. Um, so in the chat, if you say to yourself, I could help with this. I could brainstorm with you. I could think about how to set this up. Um, I just I just need ideas because I think it's only a germ of an idea right now, but I, I think we could go somewhere with this. <laughs> I'm gonna get Andrea Stewart Cousins to find me a few interns and you know, I I we'll play with the idea, shall we say. Um but I, I'm going to ask um, Mary Jane Shimsky. I, she's been she's been here for um, so much of this from boy from day one. Um, you may not know that Mary Jane is uh, my county legislator. She is the majority leader, and she is a <clears throat> PhD in history. So um, you can see why we have linked up. But I really asked Mary Jane to share a few words both about bringing useful people in and uh, just the support from the county and your leadership has been so helpful to me, Mary Jane. Uh, just share a few words with us. Uh, thank you very much, Connie. Um, you know, one of the things that we've started exploring right now is how to bring everyone into this, right? And for many, many years in this country, an awful lot of people were under the assumption that history happens somewhere else to other people. It doesn't happen here. Um, of course, events in the recent weeks and months show that history is happening here right now. But also when you look at the history of the American Revolution, the big, big events like the Battle of Yorktown, which was in Yorktown, Virginia, not Yorktown, New York. When you looked at the Battle of Bunker Hill, when you looked at the Continental Congress in Philadelphia, those are the ones that everyone seems to know. But if you really want to understand how the American Revolution affected people everywhere in everyday life, there's no better place to do it than Westchester County because Westchester County, um, even more so than most other places, 
had mixes of people. You had a lot of loyalists in the city. The British army took over New York City for most of the war. You had strategically important areas like Ticonderoga and West Point just north of us. And here it was almost a civil war that was going on in certain respects. You had um, certain landlords on one side, their tenants, depending on how they felt about the landlord might go on one side or the other side. Um, you had all kinds of demographic groups that were um, coming together that were fighting each other in um, overt ways, in covert ways. You know, if you look at the big picture of big events like the photograph, but then you look down to the pixels, so many of the pixels that explain those big pictures actually are in Westchester County. And that's why it's almost fitting that the way we're dealing with the American Revolution is almost from a bottom up perspective. Our local historical societies, our local colleges, our local officials, uh, people like Connie, who managed to pull this group together and pull in all kinds of volunteers, are starting to bring to life all of those pixels that you don't see individually when you read your typical history book or watch your typical history channel show. Um, now, when you're a little organization, how do you do that? You need resources. So obviously volunteers are important. Um, Connie and I talked, we recognized the importance of seed money, which is one of the things that Westchester County was able to do. Evidently the Greenway has also done some of that, giving some funds so that these great films which are which we thought were going to be important two years ago but are vastly more important now in the time of COVID make sure they get produced and they get put on the internet and people can access them and enjoy them but in addition to small amounts of money and large amounts of volunteers the one thing that you usually need for an organization that's light on resources to really make a difference is interns. And of course, we got to hear from Lila, who has done fabulous work. Um, there are many young people um, who have the kinds of skills that allow video production, that allow publicity um, through all of our um, digital platforms that um, are now available to us these days. Um, but it's important for us not only to take their work, but also to listen to them because they have their own perspectives on how you reach people. And they are their demographic is one of the demographics that we really do need to reach with all of this. And it was interesting um, listening to the uh, conversation about music and how music is important. And, and for those of you paying attention to the chat, there's so much resonance there. People talking about harpsichord music and all kinds of things from the, eight, from the 18th century. But basically any field of human ende endeavor has a revolutionary analog, right? You know, dance, food. You will always get a lot of people in if you do a one minute on what food was like in a revolutionary camp or on a revolutionary farm. <laughs> um, dance, fashion, um, furniture, all of that helps draw people in. And once they're in and they get a little more curious, they start learning about more of the themes of the revolution, the sociological issues, the political issues, uh, the issues of racial and um, gender justice and so on. Um, I, I think that in order for organizations like this to succeed, we need the County Kehoe's, we need those $4,000 grants, and we certainly need the Lilas. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank our young people. I hope that more of our young people um, will be getting involved with this as time goes on and free to keep going, keep going with your fiddling. Um, and eventually we'll all learn a lot about the history that took place underneath our feet. Thank you.
Mary Jane, I, I believe me, I could not have done this without you. Um, so don't 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 go away. You know, we need you. <laughs> Um, I, I did want, you know, Michael Grillo, you did meet on that video, and uh, Michael is actually making me a uniform. I, uh, you reenact your friends will, will be glad to know I'm going to have my own regimental, <laughs> which is in his basement, I think, at the moment. But I will, I'll be there for if I can't act. Maybe I could, I don't know, do something. <laughs> but you know, are you going to so, get general's insignia? <laughs> I don't know. It depends on Michael. Oh, there he's got it. Wait, let's let's see, Michael. Let's see, um, Mike. Take off your mute and just say hello. I want to see my. Uh, I want to see my uniform. Oh, mute, mute. Yep, that's all right. He's still muted, but you can <laughs> unmute. Uh, it's at the bottom usually. It could be still from something. Yeah. Else. All right. <laughs> there you Wait. go. Did it. Yeah. You did it. Okay. Say hello. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. So you see what he's got there in his hand? What do you got for me there? Have I got uh, my that's your regimental coat here? Yeah. <laughs> I have yet to attach the sleeves and the buttons. Uh -huh. And I've been thinking about listening to this being that we are calling you the general. I am thinking about eventually at some point do a formal ceremony somewhere along the way and put your epaulets to put on this coat. <laughs> that could be one of our little skits to end, uh, down the road. Yes. Well, Michael, I mean, you, he, he and Lila came down. I think you all knew that was down in the Irvington waterfront, but... Maybe you didn't know it was the little boat club, but it was freezing. So, so when I say I'm happy for volunteers, believe me, uh, people go the extra mile. And Michael, you definitely have, and we're looking forward to uh, your continued connection here. Um, I know we have Terry Clements, who is Mary Jane's colleague um, on the Board of Legislators. Um, Terry, I just wanted to make sure you could say hello um, if you uh, wished, because we're so pleased to have your support too. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so very much. Uh, not only am I Mary Jane's colleague, but I'm also an educator and I find this all to be very fascinating. I grew up in Chicago, but I was born in Philadelphia, so I know how important history is. Mm -hmm. And I think that just for children to know that the very ground that uh, they walk on every day has historical significance is very important. And I also think when we teach children history, we don't have what happened in Washington DC happen because people really understand and value our country. And so it is very important that I see this go through and that we get more and more people involved and get people to really embrace our history. Because without history, we don't know where we're going. So thank you so very much for doing this for us. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Terry. And I look forward to getting to know you better. You're, you're over in the New Rochelle. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And we have friends there. We want to get more volunteers from over there. So okay. <laughs> you can help us uh, in a little recruitment over there. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, I know we need to, to move on to our special awards because we should be done with that by now. But um, I, I thought I saw Lisa Keller was here yes. and Pat Bonamy is yes, here. Lisa, um, Lisa is a professor of history. And I'm here, Connie. Yeah, I say hello. Hello. Floating around. That's all. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. I've been listening to everybody and very impressive with what you are doing but then um as you know from our conversation when i was speaking to you from the birthplace of democracy greece when we <laughs> you originally recruited me i think <laughs> you're doing a fantastic job and keep it up well, well, look, and i'll do anything to help you as you know i i really appreciate that we need we need those historians now when mm. we're when we need to tell accurate history and we are dedicated to doing that and I know you're interested in women as well so we'll need I, your help. I am but I also want to say you've had one of the most eminent yes. 
Dutch and Revolutionary War era historians, Pat Bonamy, I see is on here. I'm about to call on her next. <laughs> I'm, she's, uh, Pat Bonamy, you just have to say hello because you are an inspiration to all of us. Pat, are you there? Or I, we saw you in a, in a, in a box. <laughs> okay. It's all right, Pat. We know. We know you're there. We know you love us. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so listen, um, the reason we called this whole event today to happen was because there are, I mean, there, there are scores and scores of people who have helped out. And I had to, and I'm going to ask Mitch to go back to our PowerPoint um, because um, I, I wanted to make some special, um, we'll have, oh, we did miss the dancing. Well, we won't have time for our music and dancing, but we do have time for our awards. That was the whole point of it. So right here, you see the Hudson Independent. Um, now, if you don't live in the river towns and you don't know the Hudson Independent, it's online, you don't have to, um, just, you don't have to live near Terrytown to hear about the Hudson Independent. But this year, this is Robert Kimmel and Barry Seaman here and some others from the wonderful staff of this local paper. They stepped up to recognize the importance of local history when we said, hey, we're doing this little project. <laughs> and Robert, um, I'm, I have this award for you, and I also have one from State Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins, too, as well as your very own <laughs> little fife and drummer. So, so, Robert, on behalf of the Hudson Independent, would you like to say a few words about this uh, work that you have done? You have to unmute yourself. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I think you can hear me now. Yes, good, thanks. Connie, I want to thank you on behalf of the Hudson Independent, and I can say that it is a privilege to receive this recognition from Revolutionary Westchester 250. I speak for the staff as well, and the Hudson Independent is a team effort. And I can say from all of us that we are grateful to have the opportunity to partner with RW250 to publish the series that Dr. Weisselberg is writing and excellently teaching us and all of our readers about what occurred in Westchester during the revolution. Uh, and for those that may have missed them, by the way, the articles can be found on the Hudson Independent uh, website under the category uh, Historic River Towns History and News. So again, thank you, Connie and Dr. Weisselberg and Revolutionary Westchester. Well, thank you, because the media is an important part of the way we want to get the message out. And when uh, Dr. Weiselberg was speaking to some teachers on Zoom a week or so ago, he was able to say, you can just go on the Hudson Independent and find my articles. So we think we have some more readers for you. Um, I know you have your colleague, if he's still, still here, Barry Seaman. Um, and Barry, uh, can you add a little bit to this? Because you actually took the extra step to interview uh, Dr. Weiselberg and me. <laughs> sure. Well, I, just to echo what Bob said, it, it was a great pleasure for us to work with the two of you. Uh, Eric's copy comes in absolutely clean, so there's no editing <laughs> extra effort that goes into it. Um, I think it benefited us tremendously to have these wonderful, fascinating stories of history, and it gives a certain gravitas to the Hudson Independent that uh, you don't normally get. I have to say, I have to give much more credit to Bob on this because, as some of you know, Bob was actually present during a lot of these uh, activities back then. And, and I think is, is considered by Eric to be a primary source. Uh, but, but I, I, I do want to thank you for this award. It's, it, it's not terribly well deserved, at least by me. Oh. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great for all of us. Thank you. Well, well, thank you. And it is. And you also will get your, your version from State Senator Stuart Cousins as well. So this is the, another, another version of this certificate that you will have virtually or real if you want. Yep. So, 
Thank you so much. And to Linda and Paula and all your tech people there, it's been a great help. And uh, let's keep it up. We've got at least six years, if not more. <laughs> okay. Um, the next slide is uh, for my very special partner friends, the Hudson River Patriots chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, you I'm sure are familiar with the DAR. I learned so much more in the last year about all that they do um, and their, 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 their meetings, their luncheons, their, uh, their sense of diversity, appreciation, understanding of history. Um, and I especially, um, the more we think about how American history needs to be taught um, and not pushed out of the curriculum somehow and the the Hudson, um, the Hudson River Patriots chapter, um, Philomena will accept this award um, for them. They, they have um, made a, quite a, um, an impressive list of programs this past year, and I'm sure in other years as well. But Philomena, we're so happy to give you this in your, in your partnership with us. <laughs> thank you, Connie. On behalf of the Daughters of the Hudson River Patriots, I just want to thank you and all the members for this honor. While it's my name on the certificate, there are so many other daughters who should be recognized. Sharon Tomback, our chapter vice regent, Dr. Sarah Marsha, our chapter historian, especially Chris Little, our chapter recording secretary, who kept us organized and pushing the documentation through for Dr. W. It was a pleasure to honor Dr. Eric Weisselberg as the outstanding teacher of American history in New York State this past year. We enjoy working with everyone as, we're, as we go forward for our 250th birthday. The mission of the RW250 to build awareness and excitement in the Revolutionary War period mirrors the DAR goals of historic preservation education and patriotism. And just a quick plug, I hope everyone will honor their family patriot in the Revolutionary War by considering joining either the Daughters of the American Revolution or the Sons of the American Revolution. If you're interested in joining the DAR, just go to dar.org and submit an interest form. And be assured the continued support of the Hudson River Patriots member, as well as every member of the DAR as the 250th anniversary approaches in 2026. We look forward to continuing working with everyone for the celebration of the 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party in 2023. Right. And all the way through the 250th anniversary of the Treaty of Paris in 2033. Right. <laughs> Again, a heartful thanks for this recognition and we'll be with you all the way through. Oh, well, we really appreciate it. I enjoy your programs and your enthusiasm and um, we're, I, I'm actually trying, I'm a prospective member, <laughs> so, but I have to do the Pennsylvania history thing. It's a little crazy, <laughs> but no matter what, do it one way or the other. <laughs> Thanks, Philomena. Um, thank you. And, and next slide, um, uh, Mitch, please. This is my, this is, this is so exciting to me because this is our hardworking, month by month by month team within RW250 who have done so much to get those newsletters out and have a website and on a Facebook page and a YouTube channel, who knew? But um, I'm gonna uh, ask Michelle Ferranda, who is the, um, the I will say the, the leader of this digital communication team to speak and uh, say a little bit about the team that she's working with. Michelle, thank you so much for all your work. Can you share a few words with us? Yeah, absolutely, Connie. Thank you so much for this award. So I, you know, I work with Jessica Cox, who's our Facebook admin, Bob Patanti, who is our membership manager, and also Lila Walsh, who is our video intern. 
And thanks to them, because it really is a team effort to make this happen. We are the behind the scenes people doing the Facebook posts that you interact with, putting up the YouTube videos that you've subscribed to and sending out those newsletters that you get to read. You know, we, uh, you know, I just want to share a little bit about our, uh, our internship program. I spoke with Connie and we're expanding it so that young people like Lila Walsh can experience what it's like to, you know, volunteer, to build professional skills, to have a chance to be mentored. So if there's any young person you know who you'd like to nominate for our internship program, we do offer a small stipend and we're happy to bring them on board. So thank you also for the donations that helped make that possible. Yes, yes, yes. I'm glad you, you said that very well. Um, it, believe me, Jessica um, gets those Facebook. She's she's there. Um, in, there she is on the chat. I'm here, Connie. Oh, hey, Jessica, say hello. Hi. <laughs> you you do the you do more than I can imagine, but um, we're just we're just making this a thank you. <laughs> uh, Bob is there somewhere. That's fine. Lila, you met already. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to scroll a video where you'll hear Frida and her violin, but you'll also see all the names of all the donors, all the volunteers, helpers, everybody including all of you you'll see uh jessica's name again and if um jessica don't you also work with mount kisco a little bit um yeah right so <laughs> you can't steal her away from us we need her but <laughs> we really appreciate your work okay so um when we show this the very end of this video is the end of the formal program if there's still time and people want to stay around, uh, we can have a little more informal Q&A. But uh, Mitch, feel free to show our video now. Thank you, Frida. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, as I said, this is really, uh, we're really finished. Um, I see we're pretty close to four <laughs> with, with five minutes, but I, I know there were some people that got left out. In fact, uh, Sean and Gary, who do the uh, theater performances, I don't know if you're still here, um, um, Gary or Sean, because we didn't get to hear about how you do Andre and, and uh, that the stories, if you are. Unmute yourself and say something. <laughs> well, if they don't say something, I will. Ah, there's Gary. Hey, hey. Gary. I guess I have to uh, echo our county executive's uh, words about our forefathers being imperfect. I guess I personify that imperfection <laughs> through Benedict Arnold. <laughs> you guys are pretty harsh on him, by the way. I might add. <laughs> Poor Ben. So oh. misunderstood. But uh, yeah, it was very impressive, uh, General Kehoe. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it was great. Uh, I loved it. Uh, you know, I, and as far as uh, Assemblyman Latimer said, I always taught so our diversity is our strength. And that was through the classroom that Sean and I started doing the, the, uh, the plays we do. And the, the Arnold one just kept snowballing and snowballing and snowballing. Um, very little time in Westchester, though. Yeah, you know, just peak skill, and I guess he took off from Westchester. So, uh, did Sean get on? Is he yeah, there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh. That right. You're yeah. not in uniform either. No. Well, wait. There you go. I'm, 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 I'm fully. Okay. Right. I'm bearded, so I, I thought the uniform would just cut it. it. This doesn't look like Andre right now. This. <laughs> you, you can. There Sean... we are, right there. Oh yeah. Here we are. So you could be a patriot, uh, Sean. I mean, you can you can switch gears. You could. I have several uniforms. I could be yeah. whatever you need me to be. Okay, <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm going to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> no, we 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 hope that you know there's going to be a lot of interest in the uh, the committee that Lynn and Bob and um, others are forming to brainstorm what are the best ways to get people interested in that whole part of our history. Um, you guys, I, I hope are in a hundred percent with us. <laughs> oh yeah. We, uh, you know, we, we've, uh, we started, uh, the Freemasons hired us and uh, at some point, and it was because they were getting lecture speakers one after the other. And then we said like, let's do something exciting. And that's why it makes history come alive. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, we started in the classroom again, so I, uh, I was a co-founder of the Living History uh, Project at Carmel, so yes. that's how we started getting into it, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they are glad, to have, glad to be a part of it. Right, well, uh, I mean, when, when, I, when you think about my discussion about, you know, uh, be creative, I mean, theater is one, and there are, you know, a million other ways that people find their way to history, but this worked for you and I think it works for a lot of people. So I'm hoping we'll be able to brainstorm with anybody you know who wants to think about how we bring in people interested in music and cooking and fabric arts and drawing and painting, send them, send them our way because I need a little team to think it through. Uh, no Absolutely. Fighting. You know. uh, Ju Judith was very impressive as well. And if Mike's still out there, Mike Grillo, shout out to Mike Grillo. He's been so helpful with me too. So. Right. It's, it, it, um, I don't know if, if Eric, um, Eric Weiselberg, are you um, gone? Are you here? Because your name was brought up a hundred times, but <laughs> well, we didn't hear from you because I didn't have time. Um, Eric, if you're here, say hello. So it was Benedict Arnold's name. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you so much, everybody. That was really gratifying to watch all the, because um, that was one of the things that got me going on Revolutionary West Chester 250. Like 2000, 2001, I go to a Battle of White Plains reenactment, take some photos. Okay, a couple years later, go to another thing. Uh, watch Arnold and Andre, you know, in a play performance. And then the idea of like, wait, did everybody else know that those things were happening? So to see here, like literally like the person who rode the horse in the 2001 reenactment that I took a photo of, and it was the kind of photo like you had to go to the drugstore and pick it up, you know, like, and then I scanned it. Like, That's how long ago that was. So it, it's amazing to see all that come together.
uh, it's pretty cool. Well, you took those photos, but that's the, you know, that's one thing you've done. I mean, over, I mean, I mean if we've, if we've done 20 performance, not, per, well, I guess they are performances, our slideshow presentations, I mean, that's, that's a lot. Now the work on the videos, uh, you, you met Nader, at least kind of, um, you're, pro you're almost neighbors, but uh, we'll be working on another three to five videos. So um, we're looking for every avenue and we're looking for every partner, federal government, the state government, the county government, and everybody seems to step up because if we've shown anything by two years, Eric, I think we've shown that there is interest. If we have a hundred people mm -hmm. in Mount Kisco at 10 in the morning on a Saturday, I think that shows interest. Mm -hmm. So we'll just gotta keep that you know, going, but. Uh, General, can I interrupt for a minute? Uh, only a minute. <laughs> All right, you happen to have in Westchester, thanks to Linda Puglis, the largest depot of living history supplies under the Living History Education Foundation. We can set up a Revolutionary War camp of 30 plus tents. We have hundreds of uniforms, toy muskets, crafts, cooking gear, et cetera, because both Gary and Sean have lugged it into the depot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it exists. And plus my foundation gives staff development for schools and we yeah. work with schools around Westchester. So there's a great resource. And we didn't plug the video of all the remastered other side of victory general oh, right. i know we can't get to everything <laughs> we can't get to everything but that's on our living history education right. foundation youtube channel so all of you that's your assignment watch <laughs> the other side of victory <laughs> right well thank you joe thank you thank you <laughs> um so if there's anybody who wants to unmute themselves i mean we're we're what two minutes oh well two minutes after four but if there any, if there's anybody who I inadvertently left out or has something, uh, you know, that they would like to add at this point, I'd be happy to hear from you. You, um, Constance, yes. you didn't uh, inadvertently leave me out because oh. you just invited me. I'm not part of the uh, Westchester 250, right. but I have been in touch with you and Eric, yeah. and uh, I am a documentary producer. And I'm at the early stages of working on a documentary about the New York, New Jersey 1776 77 campaign. Right. So, um, just seeing all these wonderful, enthusiastic people <laughs> that uh, I'd love to tap into and get those unknown stories, the little known stories, to encompass the whole of the diverse communities that were involved in the American Revolution. That is part of the focus of my project. So I'll be in touch with you early uh, next week or Monday or Tuesday by email. And um, and I look forward to meeting you in person. I got my first shot, so oh, yeah. I'm hoping for right. my second right. shot and then I can travel. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm down in Vero Beach, Florida at the moment. Oh yeah, well, that's great. I'm, I'm glad to, to meet you virtually. Um, we also have learned that Ken Burns, um, also known doing as a rather he's doing well known, on the whole of the American Revolution, yeah. Ken Burns, yes. Um, embarking on that, and um, we we know he's interested in Westchester. He's interested in the Odell House Rochambeau headquarters. Um, Susan Seal would have been here with us, but she was getting her shot today. So. Um, <laughs> That's a very important location that by 2026 may very well be a museum and it will be, um, you know, great to, um, you know, add that. I also- want I to did notice that you didn't mention uh, Colonel John Glover and Glover's Rock. Oh yeah, we know. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, we know. <laughs> and I was just wondering um, who, who, because that is, is one of the elements that I want to talk about. People, for some reason, he got forgotten. He got became an unsung hero. <laughs> oh, definitely not. Uh, Dr. Um, uh, St. Paul's, uh, David Osborne at St. Paul's National Historic Site is a good contact for you um, about that story. We love it. I did want to say, I know Linda Borkow has been on and um, Richard Borkow was my, <laughs> one of my very first, uh, um, uh, partners in this discussion. And uh, so I give a little shout out to, I don't even know if, yes, look, here's, here we have Richard Borkow's book about Westchester right in front of me. So, so Linda and Richard, if you're there, 
<laughs> I owe a lot to you guys for all that you did in the early years on this. And Dobbs Ferry is um, a leader in this. So, um, okay. Anybody else? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let everybody go. But we we have this recorded. We will put it up. We will look at all the people who have said, yes, I'll volunteer and you will hear from me. <laughs> I think if, if, you, if I'm known for anything, I'm known for persistence, right? <laughs> so, uh, I, yes, Philomena. Philomena, can I get everyone just to unmute themselves for one second? Yeah. Because I want to give you an applause and everyone else on the RW250. And I like to do that when everyone's unmuted so you can hear it. Hip hip hooray! There you go. All right, and don't, don't ever put me on Broadway, that's all. <laughs> Hamilton, oh, Hamilton. Hamilton, yes. <laughs> all right, well, I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody. Keep in touch and volunteer. We need you. We need all of you. Thank you. Good night. Go shovel a sidewalk or something. Thanks, Mitch. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.